Now every part of God's word is strong and it's already anointed, but how precious are the words of Jesus that the Holy Spirit decided must be written down so that we would be aware of them. And this morning for these moments, I want you to, with me, allow the Spirit of God to make the words of Jesus himself alive inside of us. Jesus said, the wind blows where it pleases. The Holy Spirit is free. You understand that? No human being, no finite being can control the Holy Spirit himself. The wind, the pneuma, the Holy Spirit himself, the wind will blow wherever he wills. The, now that's not to say that, well, if God decides to come today, we have no aspect, we have no part of that. No, our hunger, God sees, it gets God's attention, he's aware. But the reality is we have to remind ourselves today there is a sovereign God who is moving and beyond what even you could desire. God's making decisions today and God's spirit is free to move where he wants to go. You can't restrain it. You cannot lock it up. You cannot control it yourself. Jesus said, the wind blows where it pleases. You hear it sound. That's what this morning, that's what last night, that's what this whole weekend, there are tangible, evidential effects when the Holy Spirit is moving. When he is truly there, there's an evidence, there's an awareness. This is not just natural. This is not just something that is of our own origin or desire. You can't make it start. You don't know where it came from. Jesus said you don't have the ability to control where it's going. The movement of the Spirit of God does not originate with us. It originates with him. And then what a powerful thing Jesus says. In this way. Everyone who is born of the Spirit comes into being. In this way, everyone who is born of the Spirit, it's the only way for us to come into being. It's the only way when the Spirit of God activates our will, when the Spirit of God brings us into union with Jesus Christ, when we are born from above, it's the only way. It's that way with everyone who is born from above. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has put a spell on you that having begun in the Spirit, that's not talking about a certain kind of church that we attend or a, a certain kind of experience, having been born from above, the only way that you have the ability to perceive the kingdom realm, the only way you've been able to come alive, you were born of the Spirit. Having begun in the Spirit, what has happened to you? Who has pulled the clarity from you? How has distortion come that now you think that by your own efforts you can continue to move forward, that you can continue to have progress, that you can continue to move on to maturity and perfection in the Lord. So Father, this morning, what we cannot do, we ask you to do. Father, most of us gathered today have heard so many messages. We're so grateful and so thankful. But we've been asking for every day this weekend to continue to be your word in season. Father, you've already demonstrated this morning that you are Lord over this meeting. You've already demonstrated that there is a wind of your spirit that is blowing. And so, precious Holy Spirit, I ask you right now, I ask you right now to clothe yourself with me. I ask you to put me on as a garment. I ask you to awaken every ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Precious Spirit of God, who moved upon the face of the waters in Genesis. The Spirit and the Bride say, come in Revelation 22. Precious Holy Spirit, you have always been moving. You have always been 
fulfilling and making real the design of God. And we just pause right now. Not because you need to be reminded, because we need to be reminded that we need you. We can't even hear you. We can't even desire you, God. There's so much that fills our minds that we stop and we ask you and we, we pray in faith because we understand that you want to do something profound all morning. You want to break into our lives and place your word in us. Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an almond branch is budding. You've seen well, Jeremiah. I'm watching over my word. I watch over my word. I perform it. I accomplish it. Precious, wonderful Jesus who watches over your anointed word. Do what you have designed in every one of our lives. What you designed before even the foundation of the world that we were not even aware, before even we knew where our parents were even in relationship, you designed not only that we would be on the planet in this generation, you designed this moment, you designed everything of today, and we just yield ourselves to you that you would come. I need you, Jesus. I need you. Love you, Jesus. God, may we not talk about wind. May we not try to analyze and explain wind. May you just breathe. May you just breathe upon us. breath, the word of Almighty God, and we believe you for it in Jesus' name. Now, I want to ask you, if you believe the word in your mouth is powerful enough that when you right now speak to somebody else, it won't just be a word of hello and nonsense, but that you actually can speak life into someone else right now. Is one of the most important things we do when we gather. God's never designed. That's one of the reasons I love Michael so much is because he doesn't come as a superstar so that everyone has a spotlight on him. If you just look, you're like, uh, 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 because he's not trying to be the star. Every one of our voices, every one of us being filled with the Holy Spirit. So I want you to take a moment right now as we're being seated to speak life into somebody else. And tell them, I so appreciate that you are here. I am so glad that you've come today. Come on, all over this house, from the front to the back of the balcony, wherever you are, all over this place. Jesus is here. Jesus is worthy. Come on, if you love Jesus this morning, would you say a big amen? Come on, if you love Jesus this morning, would you just shout one more time unto God as we jump into the word, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we worship you. It's very clear from the word of God that the clouds were moving swiftly across the sky in the night. The sun had already gone down. Those ancient olive trees were beginning to move as the ever-powerful wind came blowing up from the Kidron Valley. And there's a shadow who was moving in that night. He was aware that Jesus often went to that place and all of his five, six decades on the earth could never satisfy what was pulling at the inside of him. There were 6,000 people just like him on the earth at that time. Of those 6,000 
who all did the identical thing every morning. They woke up. They strapped on their left arm those leather straps and the phylactery box and the, another one across their forehead that contained the scriptures of Exodus and Deuteronomy. All 6,000 of them dressed the same way in the black and white robes and the, the headdress. All 6,000 of them didn't just have the normal tassels that went three inches long. Their tassels went six inches long. But out of those 6,000, he excelled. He was part of the elite of those who were considered so holy and so separated. He was on the highest legislative body in all of Judaism. He was a man who was a teacher of the scriptures. But something rattled his life when the one who was God come in the flesh began to walk upon the earth and began at the age of 30 to minister and to do miracles. And so the icy formalism of a religious system and being respected by people, it could never satisfy him because the respect of people without the love of God coming into my life, it's not enough. And so he makes a decision that he's going face to face with this teacher. And I just see Jesus the same way he's been this weekend. We think we're getting excited to come and meet with Jesus. And yet he's been waiting. And when you sit down in front of him and you're face to face with him, you may think you came with all that's inside of you. He's like, I've been here. I've stirred that desire. The wind of the Holy Spirit put this inside of you to hunger after the only one that really matters. And so Nicodemus comes. The winds rustling in those olive trees and he has his speech all prepared because people like that they're very decisive they're very together he didn't just show up and let's i'll, I'll just wing whatever i feel to say he he had it all planned out he's older than jesus he's been in this longer so he's kind of baffled. How does this man speak with authority? Because I teach the scriptures and I'm not seeing anything happen. Who's this young guy who now bursts on the scene and there's all these miracles? I am among the elite of the I've never seen any miracle through my life. So he has his speech prepared. Teacher, we know you have been sent by God. Because no one can do the miracles that you do. And Jesus, in his own precious way, he stops the prepared speech. <laughs> I, 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 I have my presentation ready. I'm coming to this guy. I'm going to figure this out. Because whatever he's got, I'm going to get to the bottom of this because I have a desire to excel. I have a desire to make an impact. I have a desire to move forward. Teacher, we know you're sent from God because no one could do these miracles. I've been... Decades in this, I've never seen miracles like this. So there's got to be a God that has some kind of power. No one could do these miracles unless the power of God was with him. What he doesn't realize is he's looking into the face of God. It's not someone just who contains the power of God. He's looking into the face of God. He thinks he's older, but he's looking into the one who said before Abraham was, I am. He has been set up by God for a personal encounter with God himself through Jesus Christ. And while he's giving his prepared presentation, Jesus hearing the wind all around him says, Hey, Nicodemus, stop right there. You have to be born from above. That's how Jesus is. We come with God, I need you, our prayer requests, all these things that we think we need in this encounter, all the things on your list for this breakthrough weekend. And may I remind you, the wind cannot be controlled. The wind cannot be contained. God set you up for such a moment as this, not to get your prepared speech over and somehow God will hear what you prepared. He wants you to understand, without being born of the Spirit, 
without continuing to move forward only in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what everyone who's born of the Spirit looks like. This is what our lives look like if we are born of the Spirit. And our challenges, and I'm speaking especially to all the Nicodemuses that are listening right now. You have all of the rules lined up. You have all the protocol lined up. You have all of the robes and the look lined up. But you're still hungry because there are no miracles. You're still hungry because you can't sense the love of God. And Jesus says you're a teacher in Israel. But but you need to understand something, Nicodemus. You've got to be born all over again. I know that you take great pride in your heritage and in your lineage. But I need to remind you, Nicodemus, that that's precious. And the whole people of God have been chosen. But unless you are born from above and unless you experience and continue to live this way, you will never understand who God himself really is. And as I began to hear this wind blow and see this conversation. I'm like, Lord, this is amazing. The power of the Spirit, the power of the wind that blows. And he said, the wind of adversity will blow on anyone who is born of the Spirit. See, we're not preaching a gospel of Jesus that's just going to move powerfully by his Spirit without there being a movement, Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, a dying, a laying down. Job, a wind causes the house to collapse and all of his children perish. It's easy to read that as a story or an account in the scripture. But what would your heart be feeling if suddenly wind came and destroyed the children you love so much. Here comes that dreamer. You ever have people just mock you just because God's with you? I want to speak to everyone who feels like you're not all that. Like, I, I, just to be honest, even, even this weekend, even with all the closeness of Jesus' presence, there still can be this feeling of, I, I don't fit in. I'm not worthy. Those of you who were at the fasting thing yesterday, I felt like a chicken nugget surrounded by filet mignon. That's how I felt yesterday. <laughs> All this filet mignon on the platform, I just felt like a little nugget on the front row. Like, you can feel that way. And when adversity and wind blows, God's spirit is clearly designing every detail and whatever the enemy can throw against you, it's happening because there's a calling on your life to be like Jesus. Here comes that dreamer and they apprehend him. They cast him into a pit. They sell him as a slave. But the moment comes where they're seated at a banqueting table in the palace of their brother because a God who will allow the wind of adversity to blow will never allow you to be without the ability to feast on who he is and his abundance and his provision in our lives. The same way he sends the people of God down into Egypt. They're there for 430 years and they are bullied and they are pushed down and they are oppressed and they feel like, God, you don't even know where we are anymore. But then there is a meal. There is a lamb to be sacrificed. And there's blood to put on the doorpost. And before there's ever an exodus out of the slavery and the bondage, there is a feasting and a meal. He will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When the wind blows, it will also bring winds of adversity. But there will be a banquet that's set before us. Because Jesus is alive. Haman determines to kill the entire Jewish nation. Hadassah is raised up. But once again, before the enemy is slaughtered and killed, before they drown in the Red Sea, before this reconciliation, here's a banquet where Esther is sitting and she's prepared a table. And Haman is right there seated with them. I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to show you today, but this wind of the Holy Spirit that blows, he is real. He speaks. 
He breathes. He's here right now. He's stirring something inside of you. And I will remind you that you may have that Haman there, but God will provide more than enough. And the moment will come where God will demonstrate to you that he is the one who you really can count on. There's no better picture in the scripture of this than Judas seated at the table with Jesus in the upper room. Here's Judas who's determined he's going to betray Jesus. And Jesus not only says, I've prepared this meal for you. I have set this meal before you. He says, this is my body. He literally says, I am the meal. I am the one you need to feast on. It is the shedding of my blood that establishes a new covenant. And everything will become new if you will allow my spirit to come and breathe on you and inside of you. began to see all those pictures and then the Lord said yes but the only way you can comprehend this the wind blows you don't know where it's coming from you don't know where it's going that wind of the spirit is also a breath of God that speaks a word of authority and I saw the picture of a wicked and weak dictator Ahab and Ahab decided he was going to go to war. And he gathered together 400 prophets, but there's one he didn't invite. And I want to declare to you today, you need to make a decision and be very resolute in it. You must be clear that although you will not be invited to certain tables or certain uh, functions to speak, because there are people who are not of God and they will not invite you to their gathering because they don't want to hear what you have to say. You have to be fine with that as long as you know you've been invited into the very presence of the Lord himself. You have to be okay to understand that 400 people can all speak the same thing, but not one of them is speaking for God. 400 people can be totally in alignment. They can seem to be in agreement. There can seem to be harmony there. They're all saying, go ahead, go ahead be victorious. Go because God is with you. But Micaiah is the only one who has a revelation of the actual throne of God. And when they call him in, he's pulled aside because Jehoshaphat says to Ahab, isn't there someone who's a prophet of the Lord here that we can inquire of? And he says, well, there's one, but he never says anything good about me. And Jehoshaphat says, well, I want him to be called. And when they pull him to the side, they say, now look, your word needs to agree with everyone else's word. This is what all 400 of these prophets are saying. And he's very clear. I cannot control. I cannot speak what I want. I don't decide the word of the Lord that comes out of my mouth. I don't sit in a room and say, God, just let me have a message. I don't get to pick and choose what God wants to say on any particular day. There comes a word of authority. And the authority is not from your own spirit. It's not from your own confidence. It's because you know, although you've not been invited to stand with these, you've got to be all right with that because the Spirit of God has taken you up and caught you up and the throne that you saw is the throne of God himself and he says to the man who called him aside I cannot just say what I want to say may God baptize us and immerse us in a spirit of God that gives us a boldness to understand in the Holy Spirit we did not begin in the flesh we did not come alive by our own decision we were born from above by a miraculous sovereign god and so when it's time to speak I can only declare what God has given. And so they bring him in and he first says, go ahead, be victorious. I love that. I love that. He goes, okay, you want, me just, you want me to just fit in with everybody else? Hey, there comes a moment where you realize you can try and fit in, but it's just not going to work. That has to be taken off, and you've got to come back like a man who would only eat locusts and wild honey and say it is not right for you to have your sister. It's not right for you to have this marriage relationship. Whether they kill me or not, I don't describe or I don't write what I say. I have heard heard a voice from another realm I have seen a throne from another realm and he says I was caught up 
and I saw the throne of God himself. And I was privy and brought in to the council of the holy ones. And what I saw and what I heard, although it disagrees and is absolutely the opposite of what all 400 of these are saying, I know I have seen God. And I know I have heard what God has said. And let me tell you, Beth Lachem, you are the house of bread. You are the house of sustenance you are the house that will feed the nations as God breaks you it is not a speech for a Sunday morning I have heard a voice from another realm <laughs> Bet Lachem Lachem also means heroes God has not called you for your name to be famous, but he's called you to be a hero, a mighty warrior, a mighty Deborah, a mighty Hadassah, a mighty man of God, that you will not shrink back and be afraid to lay your life down. On Friday night as we worship, I saw the red hit Iran and move down into Iraq and move down into Saudi Arabia. God has not raised up burning ones for us to have a good weekend. There is a voice of authority. There is a voice in season. And 400 other prophets can say whatever nonsense they want to say. But we have heard the voice of Almighty God. Come on. Come on. Well, that's just for these guys who God's with them. God's with them in a unique way. No, he's called you to be raised up. He's placed you where he wants you. Imagine thousands of messengers of fire. All of us, wherever God sends you back to, who are not afraid to declare with authority, this is what the Lord said. I don't care about Ahab and Jehoshaphat in their robes and their throne. I just care about the higher up throne that I've seen. And I will not substitute anything else for the beauty. Nicodemus, you're a teacher and you still don't get it. But I need you to understand something. There is a precious Holy Spirit. He will make you come alive if you will humble and yield yourself to the movement of the divine God. If you will just understand the voice of who is speaking to you right now. Nicodemus, you're going to have to give up all those titles. You're going to have to give up all of that status. You're going to have to give up all of that and everyone respecting you and when you stand in the marketplace and when you go into the banquet halls, you have to lay that down, Nicodemus. But I promise you, if you will allow yourself to be born of water and of the Spirit, you will finally find what you have been yearning for in all of the decades of your formalism. The religion of form reaches the reality of the fullness of God and formalism and religion will never be enough because there is no authority there but when you meet a resurrected Jesus and come face to face with the one who is the exact representation of the Godhead then everything changes everything changes one more thing I'm going to close if you believe me say amen, amen. oh come on For all of you who are guests, you see how these people at Bethlehem? <laughs> I said I had one more thing to say. I didn't say how long that thing was. Seventeen <laughs> thirty-four. Where's Pastor Keith? In a place in Massachusetts with a total population of 1,100 people. That's it. A young pastor came in. Colonies that were disjointed. Group of people that were perverse. He began to preach. 
And for six months, there was absolutely no fruitfulness. Nothing was happening. And then suddenly, in a short period of time, 300 of that 1,100, the wind of the Spirit of God came. They were born from above. They moved from just being people who attended church services into an encounter and a relationship with Jesus Christ himself. And that movement and awakening spread throughout all of New England and impacted the future of a nation that was still yet unborn. In 1824, a lawyer who had been saved was bold enough to walk into Rochester, New York. And it wasn't a man all by himself. It was a man called to preach and a man called to pray. And Nash would go into the cities before Finney ever arrived. Because there is a God who, yes, he sovereignly moves and the wind of the Spirit sovereignly blows, but he responds to those who will humble themselves and pray. Yes, there's been prophecy over New York City. Yes, this is our time in God for such a time as this. But it will continue and it will be substantial because there must be a Nash who will be on his face. There must be a lady who will be on her face to say, God, I don't want anyone to know my name, but I want to be known by you, O oh God. And he goes into Rochester, and a hundred thousand people are born from above. And I say, God, if the wind blew like that, if the Spirit of God blew like that in upstate New York, God, we want not just to celebrate how great you were in the past. We want you in our day. We want you in our generation. Let the wind blow. Let the Spirit of God who is free come. Let the movement of God be real through us. That 100,000 turns into 500,000 and the impact of the relationship with Jesus Christ obliterates slavery in these United States. When the Spirit of God begins to move in power and there's a true awakening, it will change everything around us. 312 Azusa Street, those of different races and ethnicities begin to sit together and worship together in a man who won't even pick his head up but puts his head inside of a crate and says, oh God, come and let your Holy Spirit move and the Spirit of God breathe upon that place. October the 1st, 1949. Mao Zedong stands up in Tiananmen Square and says, this is the first day of the People's Republic of China. And they chase out every foreigner and they burn every Bible and they arrest every Christian. And he says, we will stamp out the movement of the wind. In fact, he had thousands and tens of thousands of teenagers that held up a little red book with his sayings. And they literally said, the east wind will prevail over the west wind because history is on our side. But what Mao Zedong did not understand because he was not born from above, it's not a contest between the wind of the east and the wind of the west. There is a wind that blows from a throne that comes down from the presence of an almighty God. And all of that arresting and all of that, they would take them in the middle of the night and break through the ice and baptize them in water. And 17-year-olds would hear for the first time that Jesus is the Son of God and he was raised from the dead. And 17 and 18-year-olds will go from village to village and city to city and begin to proclaim that Jesus and people were raised from the dead and miracles of healing took place. One hundred thousand Christians strong today because what Jesus said face to face with Nicodemus is true. You cannot lock up the wind. You cannot say to the Holy Spirit, you can come this far and no more. God will let you do this much in our church, but that's it. Jesus, come and blow by your spirit. Speak with authority and let the wonder of your awakening shake everything around us. January 1979, 3,000, 3 million, they lined the streets of Tehran as an Air France jet landed and an 80-year-old Khomeini stepped out of the plane coming back to Iran. 
October 1, 1949, Mao Zedong. April 1st, 1979. Now Khomeini's been there from January to April. He stands up and proclaims to a nation, this is the first day of God's government. Let me let all of you be aware. God's here now. This is God's government. Today is a new beginning. Today's the first day. And today, percentage-wise, the greatest revival since the day of Pentecost of people coming to Christ in relationship to population is in the nation of Iran. You cannot tell the Holy Spirit that there is a government that is stronger than he is. You cannot tell the precious Spirit of God there is a religious system or religious order. Nicodemus, you must be born from above. And the house of God, I say to you, having begun in the spirit, do you think now you can do this in the work of the flesh? Do you think now you can manufacture awakening? Do you think now there can just be a prophetic word? I declare the word of the Lord to you. All of those moments in history were the counterfeits of men who were influenced by demonic powers. But I declare to you today, for such a moment as this, and burning ones coming to this city, there is an awakening and a blowing and a movement of the Spirit of God that cannot be contained. 40 miles south of the Promised Land in Kadesh Barnea, 10 men saw what was impossible to do. 10 men focused on giants that were too large, too big, insurmountable, we can't do it. It's not enough to sit here and be excited, right? Because you're going to go back to work tomorrow. You're going to step back into your living room later tonight. You're going to step back into all the things that the enemy wants to kind of get your focus and attention on. Nicodemus, all of that striving, all of that yearning, all of that teaching of Scripture without a love and awareness of the Father and who he is in your life. None of that will produce anything. And if all of this dissipates, when the curtains come down, if all the lines dissipate, because now the event is over, we have completely missed how God has been marking us in these days. This is a moment more consequential in the spirit. God said 49, 79, 89 was the Berlin Wall, and here we are in 2019. 40 years they wandered because just 40 miles short of their promise, they said, we can't do it. And on 115th Street, just two weeks ago, there were bones that were uncovered that had been covered up for 40 years. And I believe that the Lord allowed that. I believe all the helicopters that swirled over this church just a few blocks away, there were bones that had been there since the 70s, but no one knew they were there. But there is a God who still speaks, and there's a breath like came out of the mouth of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, can these bones live? Only you know, Lord. Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind. Awake, north wind. Come, south wind. Blow upon my garden that the fragrance may go everywhere into the earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Breathe upon the bones that have long since died and dried up. Holy Spirit, I speak life in Jesus' name. I declare the word of the Lord that everything, it will be in meekness, it will be in gentleness, it will be a true movement of Jesus being reflected and revealed through our lives. It will be people that are bold because they are broken and they're not trying to make a name for themselves. But it is enough of doing religion. It is enough of form. It is enough of what is comfortable. It is time to take your hands off of controlling the wind and say, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do in my life, I lay my life down that the breath of Almighty God can fulfill your purpose in my life. May it be so that when they talk about New York City and the revival in these United States, 
2019, sovereignly, the Spirit of God came in a way that we did not in any way manufacture ourselves, but he came in his fullness, and he came to reveal Jesus, and he came to speak all nations, and he came to change our priorities, and he came to transform our character. He came so that our children would rise up and be men and women who would go after God with all that is inside of them. Where is your heart right now? What conversation did you bring and perfect and work on to present yourself to Jesus? He's so loving. He knows us so purely and so well that he right now as if you were the only person that's gathered in this room, as if you were face to face, just like that day when the wind was blowing in the trees. Nicodemus, you hear that sound? Nicodemus, can you have a clarity in your spirit? Can you hear that? Can you understand? What I'm telling you, you're a teacher and you can't comprehend these things. Nicodemus, there's only one way. Everyone who can perceive the kingdom, everyone who will understand who the Father is, everyone has to happen this way. You must be born of the Spirit and you must walk in a relationship and a dependency with him. Would you stand all over this house, this auditorium today? I know God is speaking. I know God is speaking. Jesus, Jesus, the word of God reveals the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. The unconditional love of God draws us to a place of repentance. The goodness of God, the revealing, the unfolding of his grace gift of God, not of works, lest any person should have the ability to boast. The continual empowerment of the Spirit. Are your robes perfectly affixed? Is your reputation completely intact? Have you done a great job of making sure that everybody sees and understands that you represent God and God's with you, and yet deep on the inside, you groan and cry. There's an emptiness and a stabbing pain because you know there has to be more than just gathering. There has to be more than just declaring over a city. There has to be more in what God has called me to when he called me into the fellowship of his son. There has to be more of an awareness of why I'm breathing right now, why I am the age that I am, why I'm in the season that I'm in, why God's placed me on the planet for such a moment as this. There's got to be a one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with the Lord himself that reveals and shows you.
although we are many who are here today, the way Jesus wants to deal and speak to you as as if you had come in the night all alone, knowing that Jesus would be there. So he's honored that sincerity inside of you that said, I know that God's raised up this family and this ministry, Burning Ones. I know Jesus will be there. And so he honors that sincere desire to say, I know Jesus will be there. Lord, I need you to speak to me. His word, his word, his word. Spirit of God knows every one of our hearts. But the first thing that I saw and saw so clearly, not just because it's who I am or this is what I do wherever I go, but the Lord said, if they're not bold enough to step out when my presence is so close and so real, but he said, I will empower them. I will speak to them. They will understand that they are the one I'm speaking to. So the first thing, the first area of the Spirit's calling today When I began to talk about the red and the cross and the blood, Jesus being declared in the Middle East, when I began to speak about the movements in these United States, something began to leap on the inside of you. And now you're going to wrestle with, well, I don't want anyone to think that I think too much of myself. Will you please just stop thinking that way? Will you please just come and introduce your heart all over again to a Jesus who has put his hand upon you right now and said, you know and understand what I've called you to. You know and understand I didn't call you just to sit inside of a church somewhere. I called you so that the Spirit of God who gave you birth would bring you on to maturity. That you would be one who is so marked by the blood of the Lamb that you will get into my word to understand that this is an Antioch moment. This is an Antioch assembly. This is an Antioch gathering. And I am calling you and I am putting my mark on your life. Say, well, I have this job. I have this employment. Will you allow the wind to blow upon you this morning? Would you allow the precious Holy Spirit to blow away every preconceived notion in your mind? And say, I come just as I am. I come wherever you send me filled with your spirit, I will go. In a moment, we're going to call for everyone because we all need to be being filled with the Spirit. But before anyone else comes, a moment that will mark you for the rest of your days. No matter how far back in the balcony you are or how close to the front that you are. Jesus, my only agenda is wherever the Spirit activates me to go. My every movement will be in alignment with the breath of Almighty God. I will not shudder in fear at adversity. I will not run away and be afraid to speak the word of the Lord no matter what anyone else says about me. And I am going to be the one that God uses. Yes, he'll use many. I understand that. But we're talking about this moment right now, a divine calling. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Send me to the nations. Send me across the street. Send me to America. For this moment, it's our time. Send me and fill me that I would live my entire life aware that the spirit of the living God 
is moving me to reveal Jesus Christ to those who have never heard his name before. If it's one or 100, the Lord has called me not to build upon another man's foundation. The Lord has called me to go where no one else is willing to go, not because I'm a risk taker or daring in of myself, but I've been born from above. The wind of the Spirit has blown upon my life. I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. And as the worshipers worship, would you come face to face with Jesus? And would you allow him to open your ears? Visions from the Lord right now, caught up into the heavens. On the 31st of March, 2019, not a history book, not a looking back at the past, but the Spirit of God showing you into the future, taking you to the heavenly realms, showing you the nations that your feet shall step upon, showing you the names of the airplanes and the airlines that you will walk out of and go down those steps into the prophetic destiny that God called you to. Here I am. Here I am, Lord, send me. Lord, send me. I bear on my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you laid your life down. And I will lay my life down for you in how I serve other people. I will lay my life down for you that my mind would be renewed, transformed by the renewing of the word of God and the spirit of God inside of me. I will lay down my life as I serve in my local church. I will lay down my life and be one who can be counted on to esteem others better than myself. I can lay down my life today, Lord Jesus, and I will believe that you are going to reveal resurrection power through my life. Lord, Lord, take them right now. Catch them up right now, God. Take them into a dimension and a realm that they would no longer hear my voice, that no person can do for them what you are doing for them right now. Take them one-on-one, -on -one, Father. Take them face-to-face, -face, Father. Speak and open the heavens and open their hearts right now and reveal your glory and the substance of who you are. Flames of fire and messengers flames of fire and messengers going into every nation of the earth burning ones burning ones gather us in the front we're gonna we're gonna lay hands on so and so today because they're taking off for the united arab emirates let's gather let's pray right now they're on their way to south america Come church, let's gather together this little baby that was dedicated years ago. Now God's raised them up and God's sending them into the continent of Africa. Church, can you see, let you hear the word of the Lord. Can you see the hands being laid upon those who are just ordinary people who didn't feel like they were adequate, that were not trained in institutions to teach them how to preach, to teach them how to do anything, but they were formed and shaped by the God who called them to himself we're sending this couple to New Jersey let's gather and pray God's called this couple to Michigan to minister to the Muslims in Dearborn come on church can you see it in the spirit God raising up your sons and daughters not just to excel in school and to get good grades but God put his hand upon them and put them in your home that the wind would blow that the pneuma of God that the precious Holy Spirit would mark them and he's placed them in your care that day after day you would pray over them day after day you would be life and Jesus to them son daughter keep believing son daughter God is with you son daughter he set you apart for a holy purpose before you were even formed in the womb. Jesus. Come on, let's just worship Jesus. Let's worship Jesus.